In this video, I'll be demonstrating what to do when crossing from one string to another while playing red stroke scales. Keeping in mind everything I showed in the first video, I'm going to do the same exercise, but I'm going to move from one string to another. So starting on the first string, hand position, the wrist position, did not change when I went from the first string to the fifth string. I achieved that movement by moving my arm back rather than bending my wrist. So what you don't want to do is this. And then ending up with an overextended um, wrist when you get to the bases. And then going down and fixing it. You want to keep your hand in the same position and move back at the expense of your forearm and elbow. So it's a tiny motion, it's not, you're not going to be moving it too much. For a lot of us it could be just the, the skin moving and not really sliding. Um, but for someone else you might actually need to move just a little bit further back. But that tiny motion will actually be enough to accommodate going from the first string to this fifth string without altering your, um, your right hand position and not overextending anything. The other thing you have to pay attention to is where your thumb is. So when, we've, when we started on the first string, we had put our thumb on the fourth string. Now when you go up into the bases, or down into the bases rather, your thumb is going to move with your hand. So really, this position also remains the same. You're not going to close your wrist or you're not going to open it up. So starting again, as I move back, my thumb is pushed out of the way until I get to the fifth and sixth string, where for a moment I don't have anything to rest on. Then going back up again, once I reach the fourth string, my thumb gets to the sixth string. natural position without doing anything that could eventually hurt it. And also, you have a point of reference. So except for the fifth and the sixth string, where your, your thumb has nowhere to rest, the rest of the strings, you have this reference where you know the distance. You know that if your thumb is on the fifth string, then from experience, you'll know where the first string is. If your thumb is always in the air, then if your hand moved just a little bit, then you might lose your place and not know really what string you're on. So that helps with accuracy and just knowing your place, especially when you're going to be moving your hand back and forth. And the same thing will apply if you're actually playing a scale. that I'm moving only at the expense of my forearm. <laughs> 